Hey guys, so I just added more styles to the sidebar to make it look more like Slack. And now we have these little blocks that we're using for the teams. And if I hover, I see a little border. And if I hover over here, I get a little line. And then I have these little dots um, to represent whether users are online or offline. And I'm just gonna walk you through the CSS and show you how I put this together. So first, I'm gonna show you how to make those little blocks that I did with the team. So here's what the markup looks like for it right now. Uh, team wrapper is the same as you saw. I created a team list. Um, this is very simple. I just took the default list style off so we don't see bullet points. And then I set the width to the whole width of this. Um, so it's this whole width right here. Um, and then also I just took the padding off because it smashes it to the left otherwise. And then I just, again, mapped it, and then the team list item has all the markup in it. So I did a bunch of styling to make this into a square, and I think it'll be easiest if I just inspect this and go one by one and show you how this was done. So I just made a height 50 pixels by 50 uh, height and width. I said 50 pixels. This could be decreased or increased some, um, but basically making a square. Then um, background color, I just set the background color of this guy and then the color for the font there and then the margin bottom so there's a little bit of spacing here so you can increase this more if you want more spacing and then margin auto just centers it um, then display flex this guy um, centers the text right here in the middle and then I set align items uh, center and then justify content center to get the actual text the letters in the middle and then I said bump the font size up to 24 and then I set 11 pixels on the radius um, just to, so you see this little curve so it's not a square like if I got rid of this you notice how it's a square made it nice and curvy so now if I add a little hover to this guy we can see we have this little thing here and this is just a border uh, style solid thick and then hashtag 776 so 76 76 76 for the color uh, I think I picked this one on just like a random grade that go well with it and so you'll notice here's how I do the hover and uh, style components. We don't actually know the class name of this, so we just use a ampersand to represent the class name. And then I just put all the styles I was just talking to you about, and then we use this team list item. And you'll notice I kind of just put all these little styly things on the component itself. Uh, maybe if I had a ton of these, I'd move them elsewhere. But since there's not that many, I don't want to create a file for each one, especially when we when I show you what I changed to the channels. Um, I added a, quite a few of these things. I don't want to make a file for each. Maybe if I was using them other places, I would. But since this is a view component anyway, I don't think it's bad to put CSS in the view component anyway. So that's how we got those little blocks. Now let's move on to the channel. Um, these You can see I added a couple of these, but very little CSS in each one. This one's very easy to look at. Okay, so I'm just gonna go from the very top and walk you guys down. So the first thing I did was create a little thing called push left. Um, and all that does is you see how there's like a little space right here between the edge that pushes the team name and the username over to, um, actually I should really call this push right because it pushes to the right. I'm pushing off the left though. So per push left, I just add a padding left and you'll notice how I'm using the uh, string template here to add the padding left value and this is just a div so padding left is a constant I think where do I have padding left here's padding left a constant uh, for 10 pixels padding left and then the team name header I just uh, made that a header and made it white so where is that at team name header so at white bumped up the font size and then I made this guy a header so it's big and then underneath that I just have the username still nothing changed and then I created this thing called a sidebar list that I'm using for both of these um, it's very simple I'm pushing it off the left um, uh, with a padding of left or sorry not pushing it to the left um, I will be pushing um, the items off to the left but the actual container is not so I had wanted to add this little shadow so it needs to be the full width so that's why the width is 100% on the list and I got rid of the bullet points and then I uh, got rid of the padding left so it spans the whole width of the uh, container. So I'm using that for both of these because both of these need to have a little hover. And then uh, the 
the actual items themselves. So then I'm just mapping users and channels. Um, you'll notice I also did, uh, we'll talk about the mapping in a second, the header. I created a sidebar header list and all that's doing is, uh, here it is, putting, the, it's a list item that has a padding left. So I put a padding left on these. Notice this doesn't have a hover, this does. I just want to move this over to the left some. So I just added a padding left on that uh, and made it still have it as a list item though. Um, could change that, the font size, there's something there too. So next we have our items. I'm gonna talk about the channel item because that's a little simpler because it doesn't have this little bubble. Um, all I did with the sidebar list item, we can take a look at it here, is added a padding left and I added a hover. Um, and so for this hover, what it's doing is it just sets the background color. That's it, it's pretty simple. And because it's spanning the whole width, it uh, goes across. That's how you can see it go across like that. Um, and if we wanted to, we could add like a little bit of padding. Would probably look good on this guy, like maybe five pixels. Um, and it'll push up a little bit if you want more spacing in between these items. That looks like maybe a little bit too much. Maybe you just want like, a, I don't know, two pixels or something, like just a very little amount. That way it's a little thicker um, here. Um, you can play with that number. Uh, that actually messes up the uh, padding left. Oh, because we set padding of two pixels. So you need to add the padding at the top here and notice this will actually push the padding left over and it'll still look good. Cool. I actually think that looks pretty nice with a little bit more padding. All right, so I just added some padding spur of the moment there. Um, padding left pushes it over and then the hover. You notice I'm using the ampersand again. Um, and all I'm doing um, is wrapping the, uh, the item right here. So I'm putting the name and I'm wrapping it the list item so it has the hover and the attributes here. Now with the user, I did the same thing, right? They need to have a hover. The only thing I added was this bubble. So this bubble is actually just a Unicode. And you'll notice um, I basically have a Boolean value. I'm, you can do on or off for the bubble. For now, the bubble's on for true. Um, I'll set the default value, but we can turn it off. Um, so if it's on, we're gonna show a uh, Unicode uh, circle and then I turn it green by just making a span and then the color green. Um, this is the color of Slack's green so I copied that um, and then otherwise we just show a little Unicode there uh, string. So real quick I'll show you what it looks like if I put on equal false. And we can see we see a little hollow circle. So that's how we're gonna like show different ones like we can pass the user whether they're offline or online and then the bubble will go on and off. So that's all the markup I just added um, the CSS. This code's gonna be up on GitHub if you want to check it out. In the next video what we're gonna do is actually do some GraphQL, make some container components which are going to actually make requests to our server, get some data, and then pipe the data into these view components that we just made. But uh, I think we're looking pretty good close to Slack with this, so I'm pretty happy. We haven't done the messages yet, so that's something we'll have to create, but that should be pretty easy because Semantic UI has some nice message components. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.